What's up guys? We're doing some last minute. Just gonna go out for a little deep drop here with yep. Christopher Doyle. Yep. It Willie is. Biggs, everybody missed Willie Biggs. Max. But it's almost eleven o'clock in the morning <laughs> and we're making the decision to go. Just to go out. Morning, we talked yeah. to our buddy uh Kenny Johnson, who's a dive charter captain and for some reason, he's out in 350 feet. He does do a lot of technical divers and drop them past 200 feet out, out here, but he's in 350. I asked him what he's reading over the bottom. He said a half a knot, and the three of us looked at one another. We haven't had an opportunity to go get a golden yet this year since it opened in. I'm gonna pull around front. Will's pulling around front. <laughs> Sounds like we have an opportunity. We're so, going. So we're, we're getting our Seaborg electrics together. Um, we're gonna probably drop some accurate valiance. You'll see my setup here. I've got the uh, Max L Rage 90, which is uh, spooled up with 20 pound test. So that's gonna work well for me out there. We got some 500 gram jigs. We got some 600 gram jigs. And of course the Gamagatsu um, uh, 620 single raise assist. So it's kinda, kinda nice whenever you gotta tackle shops. So whenever you get ready, you just throw it all together. Need an extra rod. If we got a few of them over here at Johnny Jigs. So, We'll see you guys out on the water. We're just a few guys that decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. Spur of the moment, we're going to go out and do some deep dropping. Uh, I've got a 500 gram guava torpedo with silver on the back glow and we have some uh, gold at the top. I have Gamakatsu 620 hooks and I'm using my Seaborg 300 today and I'm also using my Innovate 7 foot 8 250 to 650. And like Chris, it's the only rod I brought. I do have a backup SPJ 500 accurate in case something goes wrong with this setup. Hopefully we get into them. Just put the boat in neutral. We're checking the speed over ground. Went from 2.2 to 1.7 to 1.4 to 0.9. This is and we just put in neutral, so the boat's still moving, but now we're at 0.7. Ooh, baby. 0.5. I think we got a low current here, boys. 0 0.9, 1.0. The boat's still kind of uh, settling into the natural drift we have like a north westerly breeze uh, and usually the current is moving north out here 0.5 right now 0.5 so we get a lot of questions too you know what size jig and you know what shape and to drop in a certain depth and again it's all conditions depending um, what the wind's going to be doing to the boat and what the water's going to be doing the jig underneath and when you're this deep uh, you might find um, subcurrent layers doing different things uh, quicker water moving deeper down so uh, but generally if you're reading under a knot of speed over the bottom you can use whatever jig you want you know that's uh, music to our ears once you start getting up over uh, between one and two knots, obviously on the low one knot side, you can still use high fluttering jigs. Uh, once you start climbing up over a knot and a half and creeping towards two, you're really starting to get limited to moderate fluttering jigs and obviously always low fluttering jigs uh, like the torpedo. And uh, once you're up over two knots, you're, you're really limited to using torpedo jigs, which are great because torpedo jigs are great and I'll use them in no current as well. But uh, the, the speed over the bottom plays a huge role in what jig you can select to get it in the strike zone and catch the fish that you came out to catch. So now that we've stopped, checked our drift, we're gonna reset, we're gonna make an adjustment yeah. so that way we're right over the spot because we're moving so slow that, that we need to adjust. Yeah, very smart tactic. Get into the, the vicinity of the area that you wanna fish, stop the boat, check the drift, and then go reset on the exact targeted spot that you that you want to fish using the drift to your advantage. Let's go. Let's go. There it is. 
All right, guys, just hit bottom. We're out here on a deep drop, and there's not there's not much you know technique involved in the deep drop other than you know making sure that you're moving your jig. That's that's what's important that you're getting movement on the jig. And I kind of envision like my dra my jig, you know, dragging across the bottom and skipping a little bit every time that I lift up on the rod tip. But and that's why I really like this. Um, Goliath Pro Jigger. This guy's the prototype. That's why it's got a little purple in it. But the uh, the, the Pro Jigger that's actually for sale looks uh, a lot like our original Pro Jigger, except for it's long. I told you guys. I told you. Got him in the eyeball, guys. So that's on a. 500 gram, so oh, 600 gram torpedo. Oh, that is a black belly rose fish. Oh, and when you fillet these fish and you open them up, inside their belly is black. What we got? Is it gonna be a couple roses? Or is it gonna be a pile? We should see some color. We're at 40 feet. Why don't you just be a little rose pile? It could be, sometimes two rosies will fool you, man. You never know. You really never know. <laughs> All that for a little rosy. No, he's a big rosy though. Look at that. That's a big rosy. That's a big rosy. Now you can imagine that was all going through our heads. Imagine if it's a 30 pound freaking golden on the end of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a big. That's, that's a, a big rosy. But I mean, a big rosy. imagine it's a really big fish. Yeah. You are going to feel every bit of that. And I've seen it with Chris and John caught some big ones. Their line was just, their rods were bent over and they were just having the time of their lives. And that right. Gamagatsu really sunk into him. It did. Right there. Got him right through the top of the lip. Yep. So I just got a black belly rose fish on the 600 gram Johnny Jigs torpedo, uh, gold and red. And you can see I've got single hooks on the top and the bottom. And the reason for that is I'm trying to catch a golden tile, really is my goal. Well, what I'm using, and you'll notice, is the Johnny Jigs Pro Jigger Goliath. So this rod, because it's so long, is gonna help me to put action on the jig. And I've got that paired with the Maxell Rage 90 and I'm using a 20 pound test, but it's Berkley X9, so it's very thin diameter, about 0.17. Woo! Did that eat your rosy? I think so. If it had a rosy on, I that or slapped that and missed. Woo, that's a lot heavier. I got hit, and I knew it was a black belly rose fish, so I kind of just put it back down. Now I'm, then I got a big, and this guy's a lot bigger. Oh yeah, baby, that looks good. That looks, that good. looks good. The right color. Here we go. The right side. Here we go. You got heavy, bro. Holy, oh yeah, that's Come him. Come on up. Baby. That's him, baby. That's a big boy, too. I got your line. Stick that fish. Woo, that's a big boy. Watch out, you're part of stuff. I'm in free school. Let's just put him in the boat. Whoa, look at that, guys. That's a fatty boom batty. I want to show our audience this fish. Guys, look, let me get the camera behind you. Look at this. Look at this guy, guys. That's on the torpedo. Gold torpedo. Out here. We hit gold today. Little teeth, guys, if you look. There's some little crunching teeth in there. And, uh, they got this beautiful gold spots on them, and that's obviously why they call them golden tiles. They just get so big down there. I, in New Jersey, they get like 30 plus pounds, 40 pounds, even 50 pounds. So, you know, but for us, this one's great.
right guys, so we're starting to wrap up our day. We gotta get back and we gotta go to the shop and close up. Um, but we just uh, bumped in a, a couple miles off of our uh, our deep water spot. We're still pretty deep though. Um, and uh, we saw something really cool on the map and we're gonna drop some jigs and check it out. I'm actually sticking with the 600 gram Golden Glow uh, torpedo that I bumped it out there after a few drops the wind kind of picked up just a little bit and this helped me uh, continue to feel bottom but because we're just doing a kamikaze you know drop on this spot I'm gonna stick with the heavy lead and uh, you know barrel it down there quick get down there before these guys and we're just kind of seeing what's there so stay tuned we got tug I have this camera I got blasted yeah baby found a little nugget that I don't think we've ever dropped on before but we wanted to check out find your way and uh, shortly after getting down to the bottom I just got thumped I am on the Seaborg 300 so you can see those head shakes on the tip of the rod but I'm just playing them slow I got really good Gamagatsu hooks on I feel like I might need to go to the other side of the boat okay just want to go right on the back or the front? Bow. There we go, we got color coming up right here. Oh, golden tile, baby! Shut up. You gotta be It's a golden tile! You gotta be kidding me, bro! <laughs> <laughs> ah, Look at right, that! Well, I stand corrected, I will catch a golden today. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew, bro? Who knew? Well, we found a nice Here. little golden spot. Look at that luggage tag. All right, I'm just gonna, you know, put my uh, carry-on belongings in here and head home. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the hookup on it, though. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, he's got, he got a hook. Yeah, that's that's totally interesting. Wow. So I'm gonna do a little grab. There we go. That, that, that's it. Look nice and pretty right there. Yeah, let's get in the sun right this way. Let's get your camera. Good job, those, those Gamagatsu, I mean, you don't even have one in the mouth, really. No, bottom of the, that's the top of the jig. Now, I got his gill plate and his tail really, really good. Yep. So. Well, he's keeper. I'm, keeper. I'm happier to see that guy come up instead of a snowy or yeah, something, absolutely. you know? We, we almost didn't drop on this spot just because we're like, we don't know what's down there and we don't really want to catch a, a grouper right now. Yep. But it's my first golden this year. Good man. All right. All right guys, here we have our golden tile fish, which is a deep water species. This guy was somewhere between seven and 850 feet down, somewhere in that range. Um, but they're a very beautiful looking fish. They have a nice little bit of girt, so the fillets are are, are really nice and, and thick. This isn't a, a huge one, but nonetheless, it's a, it's a good size and a good eating size. So we're gonna fillet this guy up. One thing about them, they do have, um, I think mercury and or nitrogen levels. So we're gonna fillet this and we're gonna let it sit in our fridge overnight and at the earliest cook tomorrow um, or possibly today's Thursday. So uh, possibly Saturday night dinner, we're gonna cook these fillets up fresh and that helps kind of emit some of the nitrogen that the meat retains. Uh, you can you can do some reading on the World Wide Web um, about this particular fish and, and those, those uh, effects that the meat has. So we've been told and from what I've read, try not to eat them same day, let them sit overnight or two nights and then uh, cook them up. So we're gonna make our First incision right here, go up towards that head. And down along the belly. And then we're gonna go along the back. So just once you feel those pin bones, press down. I really like a blade that has some bend to it. I got one right there if you want to switch over. <laughs> this one's cool. This is a new Danko. We just brought Danko into the into the store. I've been a, a Dexter guy myself for quite some time. 
Um, once you get over this backbone right here, you wanna, again, angle down a little deeper angle. You'll see a lot of people doing that just because if you just continue straight, you'll uh, you'll miss some of the meat on the backside. So if you angle it down, you'll get the meat. And I like to poke through the tail somewhere there and just press down and whip that out. And then that'll allow me, see how we're pretty much right on the pin bones there. And then you got your backbone, and a lot of people cut around or cut around the rib cage. Um, you know, sometimes, and I know the blade will take a beating. I bust through the rib cage, um, and then I and then I cut. I mean, I'm just I'm a scavenger. I like to try to get every last bit um, of meat from these fillets. This guy's. Let's see if I'm gonna bust through or not. No, his rib cage is pretty well defined. So I'm gonna go through it there. So we're gonna go over the rib cage and down. A little bit of blood on that fillet, but we'll wash it. But that's a uh, oh, that's a really beautiful fillet. Now that we have our our fillet done here, that actually right there, that's where the Gamagatsu 620 hook penetrated his tail. And I had one kind of up around his gill plate on the head of the jig. The back of the jig's hook, like literally penetrated the entire hook into his tail and if you saw me i was holding him like a like a carry-on piece of luggage that hook was buried into his tail and you can see it hit the bloodline and a little bit of clotting going down there that's from the hook almost looks like a, a gaff shot but that's the gamagatsu 620 so um we're gonna skin this fish so kind of about a half an inch in uh gives you a nice little point to grip i've got my bare hands it's slimy so uh, I start my, my incision there and then I can grab this little hump that I left. And then basically, you know, you wanna angle down. You don't wanna go tremendously hard because you'll get a lot of the inner skin membrane. But if you really get a good skin, you're kinda just above the membrane. And this is a slimy fish, but now I've got the whole tail gripped into my hand. One nice strong grip and I can I don't even have to do much of a sawing motion I can literally just pull this fillet and help the knife just push through all the way to the end and boom there you go you know a little tiny piece of meat there but the back of the fillet is clean and beautiful that's the that's what I'm talking about right there if you ever watch read the fishmonger that dude is a pro filleter he's on TikTok and probably other platforms but he does teach you to Try not, try not to dig too heavy because then you get this membrane on the fillet. If you can leave as much of that off and get as close to it as possible, fish is gonna be prime time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, we're putting out some TikToks out there. And most importantly, jig on.